Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Broadloom's Webinar Wednesday. Uh, we are super excited to have you here today uh, to learn about ChatGPT. Now, this is something, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, that you've probably heard about uh, online or in the news, generally speaking. Uh, it's one of the most uh, interesting, in my mind, advancements in technology that we've seen in a very long time. So as we have uh, some folks filter in here, I did want to just give a quick introduction uh, on myself uh, before we dive in. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm one of the co-founders here at Broadloom and the Chief Revenue Officer. Uh, before I started Broadloom, I worked on the AdWords team at Google, where I helped thousands and thousands of small businesses grow online. And over the last five or six years, I've become absolutely obsessed with helping flooring retailers adopt new technologies uh, that will help their businesses grow. Um, and so it's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to talk to you guys about ChatGPT, because again, it's really one of the most powerful advancements in technology that we've seen in a long time. A uh, little fun fact, uh, before we dive in here, I spent about a year uh, in college traveling around the world um, writing about street food vendors and how they ran their small businesses. Uh, it was like Anthony Bourdain, except I wasn't making any money and I lived off of like peanut butter jelly sandwiches and ramen noodles, but it was a great experience and it only furthered my love of small businesses. Okay, let's dive into today's agenda because there is a lot for us to talk about. Um, we're going to talk today about ChatGPT. Again, something I'm very, very excited to share with everyone here. Uh, but before we do that, I think it's so important to first understand uh, artificial intelligence because ChatGPT is nothing more than an AI-powered chatbot, an AI-powered tool. Um, so we're going to start there. We're going to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Then we're going to give you guys an intro on ChatGPT. Uh, again, for those that haven't seen it in the news or, or played around with it themselves, uh, we're going to talk about the importance of ChatGPT prompts, what they are and how you use them the best way possible. Um, and then we're going to talk about the specific ways that flooring retailers can leverage ChatGPT today uh, to help in the day-to-day -day of, of running their business. Uh, and then we're going to conclude with a live demo to show you again how it works in real time. And then we'll end with Q&A. So if you guys have questions, please add them in the chat and I'll get to them at the end of today's webinar. Okay, artificial intelligence. Let's get into it. So artificial intelligence is basically a field of computer science that aims to create intelligent machines that can learn, reason, and solve problems like humans. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, Dan, I've seen how this movie ends, uh, and it's not good. And I'm happy to say that this is nothing like The Terminator. Um, this isn't Skynet. Uh, and that you've probably interacted with artificial intelligence hundreds of times throughout the course of your day without ever realizing it because you've got thousands of companies across the world that are using it today um, to create uh, easier and safer lives for, for all of us here. Um, well, what are some examples of that? Well, uh, healthcare companies have been leveraging artificial intelligence to develop personalized treatment plans um, for their patients, right? Everyone is a little bit different, their needs, what type of medication works or doesn't work for them is different. Um, so AI has been used to help uh, pair the right patients with the right um, treatment plans. Uh, financial institutions are using artificial intelligence to detect things like fraud, obviously very important uh, in terms of our banking institutions. Auto manufacturers are doing some really cool things with AI, um, things like self-driving car technology, right? So if you see a a car that drives itself in your town, uh, you can thank artificial intelligence for that. And then finally, online retailers um, are using AI to push the products that they think we are most likely to buy. Now, you've probably interacted with that a ton if you've ever shopped on Amazon, right? You buy an iPhone and then immediately you're starting to see suggested items for I iPhone cases and iPhone chargers. Uh, AI is powering all of those things. So Again, it's not something to be afraid of. It's something that you've probably interacted with a hundred times already. Um, and uh, it's something to understand because it is changing the ways that businesses operate today. Now, 
as much as you may have interacted with it in your day to day, it's still very early in the world of artificial intelligence, right? Only 35% of businesses in the United States are using AI. And while that number is expected to grow drastically over the next couple of years, um, it's still very early. So I think the important thing to remember here is that like all technology, as things improve with artificial intelligent, intelligence, it's gonna become easier and easier for businesses of all shapes and sizes to leverage. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to everyone here about ChatGPT, because it is actually the first artificial intelligence power tool that was made for a mass audience. Um, and you've probably seen it on the news, you've heard about it on the radio, uh, and we're gonna walk everyone through so that you know exactly what it is and how it can help your business today. All right, so we're gonna dive right in. Um, now, when you pop all the way up, um, and ask what chat GPT is, it's pretty simple. It's a chat bot that's capable of understanding human speech and then producing in-depth responses that are easily understood by us as humans. Um, now, when you're interacting with chat GPT, it's not like there's a bunch of people on the other side feverishly typing responses as soon as they get questions um, or prompts from you. Uh, you're actually interacting with computer software. Um, and that's what's one of the, the, the wild things about this technology is it's capable of understanding really simple requests and then really, really complicated requests. And we're going to take a look later on uh, in this webinar around what that actually looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you're using ChatGPT, you can uh, give it tasks or ask it questions and it's gonna use its collective knowledge of that topic to generate a response. Now, again, these questions or tasks can be really simple, like how many people are in the state of Massachusetts or really complex, like code me a website or write me a social media post uh, promoting our current sale on carpet. All you need to do is type that into ChatGPT and then ChatGPT will answer that request um, or respond with that task um, in just a couple of seconds. As I was saying, this is one of the first uh, mass market commercial uses of artificial intelligence that anyone can leverage. It's a free tool that's still early in its development, but is already providing value to thousands of businesses across the country. So how does it work? Could not be more easy. All you need to do is follow four simple steps. The first is you submit a question or a prompt to chat GPT, you wait the second or two for it to generate a response, you review the response and make any edits that you see necessary, and then you can leverage that response for any of your business needs. Um, again, we're gonna take a look at what that actually looks like in real time later on in this webinar, um, but it's like a magic trick. Seeing it for the first time, it's almost difficult to believe um, how powerful of a tool this is currently and will be as it improves um, but it is, uh, and it's one of the reasons why we were excited to host this webinar today. Okay, I've been talking a lot about prompts, chat GPT prompts, um, and I think it's important before we move on here to talk a little bit about what chat GPT prompts are and how you can best leverage them um, to get the best responses from the AI. So basically a chat GPT prompt is just a question or a statement that helps to guide the ChatGPT software in generating the best response possible. So the easy way to think about this is good prompts equal good responses and bad prompts equal bad responses. Um, so what is a good prompt? A good prompt is uh, a lot of context, giving ChatGPT all the information it needs to give you the best response possible. What is a bad prompt? Well, it's the opposite. It is um, a request, a question with not much detail um, that uh, doesn't give the technology enough information to go on. So it's gonna give you kind of a middling response. I have a couple examples over here to the side um, to show you that difference. Let's say I was a retailer uh, and I was looking to add another uh, retail sales associate to my team. Well, I could ask ChatGPT so just write me a job description for a salesperson. That would be an example of a prompt. 
albeit a bad prompt. And chat GPT might take some guesses, right? Is it a general salesperson? Am I selling, you know, cars or technology? Um, and it will give me a very broad job description based on the limited information I provided in the prompt. Now let's take a look at this other option. Um, the prompt here says, pretend you're the owner of a retail flooring store. Write me a job description for a retail sales associate. This role will be responsible for selling customers that visit my showroom. They need at least five years of retail sales experience, college grads only. We're giving the software much more information to go off of, right? We're asking it, A, to think about itself as the owner of a flooring store, right? And I know that sounds weird, but it is helpful in generating the best responses for the AI that you can. Um, and then we're giving it some added context, right? The job description is for a retail sales associate. So right now, the software is, is being able to narrow in on that specific type of role, not a general sales role, but a specific retail sales role. And then we're saying, hey, you know, this person's going to be responsible for interacting with customers in my showroom, a little bit more information. And then we're saying we want at least five years of experience and this person has to have graduated from college. So ChatGPT is going to take all that information now and get much more specific when it writes the job description. And we're going to show you guys what that looks like in just a second here. You can think of prompts as basically a way of training the AI to be as helpful for you as possible because that's what you're doing. You're giving it as much information as you can to give you the most specific responses possible um, that will help lead to a better response. So I could spend the next couple of minutes telling you guys more about how these prompts work, or I could show you how they work um, and blow your mind. And so that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna take a second right now, and I'm gonna share my screen, and we're gonna go through this together. Okay, what you're seeing here is the chat GPT interface. Now on the surface, it looks very simple. You've got a couple example prompts that it's showing you. Uh, you've got the text bar here that you're gonna use to do all of your interaction with the AI. And that's pretty much it. And so to get started, it's really as simple as adding your first prompt and then going from there. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now, uh, we're gonna use the exact same example that we used on the previous slide. Let's pretend uh, I'm a uh, flooring store owner and I'm looking to add a new retail sales associate to my team. Uh, now I've already written this prompt, so all I'm gonna do is copy and paste it. Okay, and I'm telling uh, ChatGPT here in this prompt, pretend that you're a sales manager at a retail flooring store. The name of the store is Dan's Carpet Mart. Uh, you're looking for a new retail sales associate to join your team. The person will be responsible for selling people that visit your showroom. They need to have at least five years of retail sales experience, college grads only. And now this is the big part. I'm asking ChatGPT to write me a job description that I can post online. Um, I do wanna add one extra thing here. I wanna add the store is located in Westport, Massachusetts. Okay. Now I'm gonna hit submit and I'm gonna wait for chat GPT to give me a response. And you can see how quick chat GPT is doing this work for me. And again, this is me interacting with the with computer software. There's not someone on the other side feverishly typing away. Um, this is all through the software. Now, uh, obviously pretty impressive. And we're gonna go through this together to show you um, uh, what I mean by that. But it's important to understand that as amazing as this technology is, it is not perfect. So a big part of our process should be reviewing the output that ChatGPT provides us so that we can make any edits before we use it for our business. Um, so let's review its work. You can see without me asking, um, ChatGPT has organized us in a way where I could immediately copy and paste it to any job board that I may be using online. Uh, we've got the name of the company, Dan's Carpet Mart, the location of where the store is, Westport, Massachusetts. Uh, the job is full-time. Now it made an assumption there, um, but I'm happy that it did because let's say I wanted a full-time uh, hire here. I didn't give it any salary information, so it just said competitive. Uh, again, it's smart enough to fill in the gaps here without you having to add every single bit of information. 
Um, and then uh, it goes right into the job post. Um, you'll also notice that, you know, again, it's not just giving you a bulleted list. It's giving you a little bit of pizzazz, right? It's saying Dan's Carpet Mart is the leading retail flooring store in Westport, Massachusetts. And it's seeking a highly motivated and experienced retail sales associate to join the team. Um, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, now let's take a look at some of the uh, assumptions that it made around responsibilities and requirements. Um, greet customers in a professional and friendly manner. Awesome. Determine the needs of the customer and provide them with appropriate product rec recommendations. Um, amazing. Um, perform sales transactions, including receiving payments and issuing receipts. Don't love that. I'd probably make a change there. That's not perfect. Um, maintain a clean and organized showroom to ensure all products are properly displayed. I love that. Uh, again, it's, it's generating this information with this very simple prompt. Um, and I think that's the power of this technology is you don't need to give it much. You want to give it more than zero, right? But you don't have to fill in every single blank. It's going to do that for you. Um, and again, on the requirement side, right, it, it did what I asked it to do, right? Five years of retail sales experience, college grads only. Uh, and then it added some stuff of its own. Um, now, again, I can agree or disagree with this. That's why editing these posts are really important, right? You don't want to just copy and paste. Uh, but it took a, a task that may have taken me 30 minutes before and completed it in maybe a minute or two when you factor in the time it took us to write this prompt. Now, let's say this was perfect, right? And I didn't want to make any changes to it. Um, and I wanted to further prepare myself for the inevitable interviews uh, I would need to take uh, as applicants started rolling in. Well, chat, GP, chat GPT can help with that too. Um, so I'm gonna say, this is great. Thanks. Always love to thank the AI just in case they take over the world. Um, can you help me? with a list of interview questions for this role. Because you know what? I really don't want to spend the time coming up with good interview questions. So maybe the, the AI can help me figure that out. Let's see if it can. And again, you're seeing in just a couple seconds, it's generating these responses for me to review. Okay, let's see how it did. Uh, what do you consider to be the most important aspect of providing exceptional customer service? Love that question. Uh, how do you approach customer interactions? Tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult customer. How did you handle the situation? Again, this isn't groundbreaking stuff, right? I may have come to these questions on my own, given my experience, but again, it's saving me even 10 minutes of time, 20 minutes of time throughout my day so I can refocus that time and attention in other areas. Um, so that is really the power of ChatGPT. Now, it can do much more than just help you generate some interview questions and uh, a cool job description. And we're gonna show you what that looks like here in the next slide. So I'm gonna just stop sharing my screen here and we'll get back to the presentation. Okay. So like I was saying, um, ChatGPT can be used for more than just writing a job description or some interview questions. Um, again, the technology is still early, uh, but already I'm seeing businesses use it for a bunch of different things. A good example would be um, automating customer service. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I've seen companies use ChatGPT to quickly write emails um, that they can use uh, in their customer service uh, process, right? Let's say a customer reaches out to you and they have a bad experience and they're looking for a refund. Well, ChatGPT can help you write an email addressing that specific problem. Um, again, maybe saving you some time for uh, figuring out the best way to word the email and put it in the, in the perfect context. Um, it can help save you some time there. Uh, we're also seeing companies use ChatGPT to help with so social media content creation, right? We used the example earlier in this presentation, but let's say you were running a sale on carpet and you wanted to promote that sale on Facebook, all you would need to do is tell ChatGPT to think of itself as a social media marketer for a flooring business and to help you generate ads for Facebook um, that promote your sale on carpet, right? It will give you as many variations 
um, as you want that you can use in that effort. It can help with things like email marketing. Let's say you wanted to create a three uh, drip email cadence, right? For customers that sign up to schedule time um, with you in your showroom. Um, ChatGPT can create those emails for you that all you need to do is copy and paste um, in, in just a couple of seconds. And then finally, it can even do things like helping support employee training, right? Let's say once you've hired that salesperson, that retail sales associate, um, and you wanted to walk them through the best things that they needed to know about how to sell your products. Well, there are certain things, general sales tactics that ChatGPT could help with um, in terms of putting together training uh, materials or employee handbooks, those types of things. Um, so again, as a technology, things are still early and it's not perfect, uh, but there are many different ways that you can leverage it today to save you time uh, with repetitive tasks that you might not want to spend the time on. So you can focus on more important things. So I wanted to leave you here before diving into Q&A with some final thoughts. Um, artificial intelligence, without question, is going to change the way that all companies operate in the future. And I think the important thing to keep in mind here is uh, the earlier you start to familiarize yourself with these forms of technology, uh, the better off you're going to be when things really start to pick up speed. Um, now, ChatGPT is like the perfect tool uh, to begin experimenting with when it comes to AI because it's so user friendly, it's so easy to get up and running, and it's a free tool. Um, it's going to really help you understand how powerful this technology can become and how helpful it can be to help you again with random tasks throughout your business. Um, prompts are important. I'm going to say that one more time. Prompts are important. So make sure to include the right amount of detail so that you're left with really good responses instead of, um, you know, really like middling responses. We actually spent some time and put together a free chat GPT prompt guide for flooring retailers. Um, you can scan that QR code. It will take you right to the page where you can download the ebook. Uh, and inside the ebook, we have, you know, I think it's 24, 25 different prompts that you can use um, right out of the gate to help uh, with things like, again, job postings, uh, blog posts, emails, those types of things. Um, and then finally, you know, while ChatGPT is obviously very impressive, it's by no means perfect. And so it's very important for you to check the work as it's coming in before you use it for your business. Um, the worst thing you can do is think of this as a silver bullet where you ask it a question, you get a response, you copy and paste it without even thinking twice, it's not that good yet, right? So you wanna make sure that as part of this process, you're taking the time to, um, to review the work, make any edits that you feel are necessary uh, before using as part of your business cadence. Uh, so that's it. I really appreciate everyone taking the time today to learn about this new, exciting technology. I hope you found it valuable. Uh, and with that, we are gonna dive into Q&A. All right. Well, awesome job, Dan. Uh, you know, just listening to you break it down has been super, super helpful, has opened up my eyes to a ton of different ways that we can utilize it. Uh, I know we had a couple of people submit questions ahead of time, so we will try to answer those out of the gate. And then just even from the conversations I'm seeing in YouTube and even on Facebook, the wheels are going. And I think people are starting to see how much this can actually impact them. And I think the timing of this webinar is super important, uh, just really because ChatGPT just had a huge new release. So I think we could also talk about that shortly. And I can already see the questions coming in. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's start to hop into it. Uh, what is the first question we have up here? What are the limitations of ChatGPT? Dan. Okay, so um, I talked about this a little bit a few minutes ago, but uh, it's an impressive piece of technology. There's no question about that. Having said that, there are limitations, right? It's not a perfect piece of technology. It's uh, constantly getting better. Um, the folks over at OpenAI, the company that built ChatGPT, just launched um, uh, their latest generation of the technology yesterday. So we're all quickly coming up to speed to learn what that's gonna enable all companies to take advantage of. 
But I would say the things to keep in mind are, um, you know, the big one is the learning um, data set that ChatGPT uses to create its answers uh, stops um, at 2001. So anything that's happened from 2001 on, um, ChatGPT, the computer software that powers it, won't really know. Um, and so that's one big piece of, of limitation within the software today. Um, the other is it's not always accurate. And we talked about that again a little bit in the webinar. Um, you can't take it at face value 100% of the time. It is very good at what it does, but a big part of the process here for most people that are leveraging it uh, should be a checks and balances system. Don't take what it's saying or the data that it's giving you at face value. You wanna, you wanna source it in other places and make sure that, it's, that you're seeing the full picture. So those would be the, the big things, those are the limitations. All right, so just the way I'm hearing you say this, use it as a jump off point, right? Get that first draft, have it give you the framework. And that's where you should really, as you did, you know, go through the job description, pick what works, pick what doesn't work. But, you know, at least from like the writer block side, right? We often talk about the blinking cursor, right? Yeah. You don't know where to start. It takes all that out of, uh, you know, out of uh, the play for you essentially. Yeah, I've been trying to follow all the questions that are popping up in chat right now because um, uh, Jeff's moderating and doing a great job at it. But um, I think one of the questions I saw was like, hey, how do you deal with like copyright issues if you're writing a blog post, Some, something like that? And I think, Jeff, what you just said is the perfect way to deal with it. Chat GPT shouldn't be thought of as something that will like 100% do the work for you, right? Like, as we all know, a big rallying cry for us here at Broadlam is like, we all gotta be responsible for doing the work ourselves. And this tool can help you do that. Um, and so when you're looking at leveraging ChatGPT for things like blog posts, as an example, um, it's most helpful at getting that writer's block kind of out of the way, right? If you're asking it to help you write a blog post about the differences between you know, LVP and hardwood, um, it's gonna give you a pretty decent blog post, but it's not gonna be perfect you want to make sure that you're using the knowledge you have of this industry to add your own special twist to it that you feel your audience is going to most resonate with. Um, so I think, again, that's an important thing to keep in mind um, as you're using the technology for the first time is it's a great starting point, a great jumping off point, but it needs a lot of work from the person leveraging the tool to make it like, you know, um, ready for prime time is the way that I would look at it. Oh, yeah. And I think going back to the question, which was from rock top surfaces, countertops and flooring, um, you know, Dan, you did a really good job when you were inputting it yourself. Right. You have to give it a certain amount of context for it to get close to the output that you want. Right. If I just said, you know, you mentioned an email drip. Right. Which is, you know, a sequence of emails that you would want to send to your customers. If you just say, give me three emails about my store, they don't really know about your store that well. So. You know, when you gave the location of your store, you gave the name, you gave some of the things that you stand out of the market. I think the more, what I'm understanding you say is the more that you put into it, the better the responses you're going to get. Is that right? hundred percent. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it seems counterintuitive, I guess, in some ways, right? Like, or a little bit weird, at least for me, when I was playing around with the tech for the first time, um, you know, when you're asking it to pretend to be something, right? So pretend to be a flooring store owner or pretend that you're a marketing manager at a local flooring retail store, right? That sounds weird, but it really does help generate the best responses. Um, and then Jeff, like you were saying, all of that added context, right? The name of your store, how long you've been in business, right? The different products and services that you offer, the more you feed the technology, the more information it has to create really custom, unique responses that not anyone else will have access to. And to be totally honest, my favorite part is you always thanking the AI, just in case <laughs> things get out of control. And you know, you, you want you always want to be nice. I think that that's I want to be on their good side at all times. Yeah, you never know. So now, now we just talked about putting information into you know Chat GPT, and I just saw a question pop up here. Um, how much too information is, you know, bad information? So uh, the question was, are there any risks while using the platform? Like, do you not want to put in personal information? Like, where does it go? Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's a company on the other side. Where do you want to sort of, you know, pull up short and make sure you're not giving them too much information? 
Yeah, I wouldn't like drop your like social security number or your credit card into ChatGPT, right? But I think using things like your store name, where you're located, I think all that information is fine. Um, again, ChatGPT is like an amalgamation of all the data that lives on the internet. That's how you can kind of think about it. And so um, I'll give you an example. I could ask ChatGPT to write me a summary of Broadloom, right? Who is Broadloom um, or Floor Force or or retail lead management. Um, and it would write me a paragraph about Broadloom um, and our history and you know the companies that we've acquired and the people that we work with. Um, because again, it's, it's taking all the, the collective information that the internet has and it's using it to create its responses. So more likely than not, ChatGPT already has information about your business, right? If your business exists online in any way, shape or form. And so, um, so yeah, I would say I wouldn't be like, it's no different than you typing in your business name in Google. It's kind of how I would think about it. But again, I would not put like very um, personal information into the, into the chat by um, there's no point in, in uh, creating that risk for yourself. And let's just be clear. Do not put your social security credit yes. card information, <laughs> anything like that uh, into it, because we, we talked about the other side. Um, and I just saw a question pop up here uh, about, you know, some of the bigger tech names uh, in the space, um, because you know, from what you know, you see in the market, Google's come out with an offering uh, in the artificial intelligence side. Uh, Bing has, you know, Bing has always sort of been the laughing stock in the search realm, but uh, their new offering is really strong. Um, and you know, now this newer company that a lot of people are starting to get familiar with, right? I'd say almost more people know ChatGPT as a name than OpenAI, which is the company that owns them. Um, so in, in terms of those things, Dan, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're in the hot seat here. You know, six months from now, who do you see as being the leader in the artificial intelligence space? Yeah, it's a, it's a good <laughs> question. Um, listen, I think it's, it's so early in, um, in this evolution of technology, right? It really does feel like the early days of the internet, right? Or the early days of search, right? Where Google... Google wasn't the first search engine, right? But they became the dominant player in search because they created the best product and, and momentum played a, you know, a big role in them being the business that they are today. I expect something similar to happen with, um, with artificial intelligence um, as a category, right? What you're seeing right now is a ton of companies beginning to invest in artificial intelligence. And, you know, ChatGPT and the company that created it, OpenAI, they might become the front runner. They're definitely uh, the company that everyone seems to be betting on right now. Um, but who knows? Google, with its vast resources, might come in and uh, and and make a, a big push for it. The interesting thing is, um, you know, you mentioned Bing, right? Microsoft. Uh, they uh, actually invested ten billion dollars into OpenAI, the company that um, that that built ChatGPT and has already started to embed a lot of that technology into its ecosystem. So things like its search platform and some other areas. So it's, again, it's still very early, um, but a technology nerd like myself, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I haven't been this excited about a new technology um, gracing the world since the iPhone was first launched. So I think there's a massive, massive, massive amount of opportunity for all of us here, right, to leverage this technology or at least start to learn about it so that we can figure out in the future how we want to apply it to our businesses. That is a great not answer and a great answer from a <laughs> pro there. Uh, let's wait and see, right? It's anyone's game at that point. Um, I see a couple of people uh, from Anthony Patino and uh, Oliver Reck uh, talking about access. Uh, so I want to talk about quickly, you know, how you can actually get on the platform. I know you gave a quick demo there. And then we'll talk about a little bit more use cases for flooring retailers because there are so many different ways that they can leverage this uh, in their stores, in their sales process, in their marketing. Um, but Dan, you know, whether you link it to an account, whether you know, I believe there's a now paid version available. Um, you know, what is the best way for someone to access it? Because I know often we try to get on during the day, ain't happening. We have to log on at night or early morning you know, get there because there's only a certain capacity to using the platform, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a great question. And again, I'll keep saying this because it's true. This technology is very, very new and it's created a tremendous 
impact on the world in a very short period of time, which means everyone is clamoring to try it, which means the infrastructure that this company created is, is trying to maintain the demands that, that it's seeing. Um, and so that's what Jeff is referring to. You know, you, you go to their website and it's down for a little bit or it's over capacity. Um, and so I would say be patient with it. We actually have a blog post on the Broadloom blog. Um, you can visit the blog by just going to our website, clicking blog. Uh, but there is a, an article I wrote on the blog about artificial intelligence and chat GPT. Inside of that article, there are some instructions that you can use to get up and running with chat GPT um, that will walk you through the process. Um, so I would encourage you guys to check that out if you're learning on how to get up and running with it for the first time. Um, but if you're, if you're doing that now and you're still running into issues, it's more likely than not um, just a bandwidth issue because everyone's trying to get on it. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. They just launched a new version. And so you're seeing maybe even more interest than there has been over the last couple of weeks uh, on the platform. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. You know, when everyone's clamoring to get on, you know, there's only so many seats at the table, at least from a usage perspective, uh, this early on. Um, I keep seeing a bunch of questions come up about plagiarism and just real, real quick pause. We are not lawyers. So, you know, pl please do not take our advice as legal advice here. Um, but, you know, could there be plagiarism, uh, plagiarism issues? Uh, Rock Top asked this question. Um, if you posted a, a final edited version of a blog on your site when Google crawls it. So at least just from my side, right? And, and we, we talk about, you know, often parodied work or inspired works. Um, a, you wouldn't want to just have the output of ChatGPT directly on your website. Because A, we often talk about personalization, localization, telling your story. So it should never be, you know, one-to-one, -one, at least in my opinion. Um, but then when you talk about, you know, plagiarism on the web, there's a lot of people asking uh, ChatGPT the same questions, right? And while a lot of these answers are going to be slightly different, right, there's going to be a bulk that is similar. So my recommendation, Dan, what I've heard from you is, you know, just make sure you're editing it, cleaning it up, making sure that all that information is correct because, you know, it should show up as new content from Google's perspective because it is essentially, you know, aggregating all these different you know, language models and concepts and the inputs that you have in there. Um, so it shouldn't necessarily exist on the website or, or on the web right now, uh, rock top, but you know, you should, you should always make sure that you, you know, add your own flavor and uh, you know, create your own work from it. You know, you, you see a lot of people putting this uh, in the chat it's a starting point. It's a framework. It's not supposed to do all your homework. It's supposed to maybe help you with some of that algebra. I saw that one in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, I probably need help with some algebra, but at the end of the day, uh, it should just help you get that, you know, first step out the door, at least in my opinion. Dan, how are you looking at it? Yeah, I, I think if you're like, let's say you're using it to write content for your website. If you're just copying and pasting, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, and so again, what Jeff is saying is spot on. You want to use it as a jumping off point to help you generate some really interesting ideas, some some ways of framing a sentence that you wouldn't have thought otherwise, and then building on top of it and making it yours. That's like the safest way to protect yourself. Um, but like Jeff was saying, we're not lawyers and we're still kind of in like the wild, wild west era of artificial intelligence and you know, who, who owns the data that's being leveraged to create these language models. So um, I think a little bit of that is TBD, right? You're even starting to see like, hey, a blog post I create in ChatGPT, what does that mean from a search engine optimization perspective? And so, you know, Google's come out and has said it has no impact, right? Like it, it, we treat it like any other blog post, um, but there still doesn't mean that it's a well-optimized blog post, right? You still have to do the work to make it um, better than what you're getting straight from the AI. So again, really important to keep in mind, it's not a perfect tool, um, but it'll cut 75% of the workout for you. Okay, yeah, I, I think that's spot on. It, it, like with anything, just don't copy someone's work, even if it's an artificial intelligence you know, bot, uh, you always wanna make it you know, personalized. So uh, here, let's pull up the next question uh, from Oliver Reck. Uh, can you give an example using AI on flooring retailers? Now, Oliver, 
you know, please put this in the chat, but I believe you mean in terms of different use cases or at least different areas of the business. Uh, so Dan, maybe we just try to quickly go through off the cuff and rattle off a couple of different ways that this could be leveraged for flooring retailers. I know you put together a great blog and sort of how to guide of using the platform, but you know, at least, you know, from your early usage, what was the first thing that jumped out to you? Yeah, Oliver, that's a great question. And, and I definitely encourage you to check out the blog and the ebook, which gives you um, a bunch of different props that you can leverage and it's broken out by category. So like where in your business you can use these prompts to get certain results. Um, but I would say like, there's the, the today uses and then how companies take this technology, build on top of it and use it to benefit retailers and, and what that could look like. Let's stick with today just for the purposes of this conversation. Today, you could use it in the ways that we referenced in this webinar, right? You could use it to help you generate blog posts, um, generate questions for a job interview, uh, trainings for your sales team or your marketing team, employee handbooks, right? Like let's say culture was really important for your business and you wanted an employee handbook to keep everyone on the same page that you used during an employee onboarding process. You could ask ChatGPT to write you that handbook. Um, so, uh, so those are the things that immediately come to mind. It's also really good at taking bits of data and manipulating it based on what you're looking to achieve with that information, right? So you could give it, you know, information around how many, you know, leads you have in your database, and um, and help you parse out the information to look for trends that might. Uh, be obscured in the data that you want ChatGPT Chat, Chat to pull out for you. Um, you know, uh, so so those are all things, right, that are, are you're able to use today. There's also the marketing stuff, right? We talked a little bit about like blog content. Social media content is a massive one, um, right? And I gave just one example where I said, imagine you're a flooring retailer and you're looking to run a sale on carpet and you want to advertise that sale on Facebook. You can have ChatGPT write you an ad that you can post on Facebook, but then you could do that like 500 other times. It could give you 500 different variations. You could upload all those variations to Facebook and start to test which ones make the most sense or seeing the best performance, right? So um, again, there's a lot of like today value that this technology can create through the ChatGPT interface. And then the value it will likely create in the future will really come down to how businesses take the technology and embed it into their experiences, right? Can it make the tools you're already using today much easier to leverage and much more valuable um, because it's just a different set of technology that's being accessed? Um, and that's one of the things that we're really excited about, to be honest with you. All right, and just watching the chat, sounds like you nailed it, Dan, on Oliver's side. Um, the other one that I love, right, and we talk about the frameworks in that first step. Um, and often when you're talking to customers, uh, you don't really know where to start, right? Is it a good email? Is it a bad email? I've seen some incredible uses of it, of, you know, how to deal with a difficult customer. How do I write, you know, back to them with this thing? Um, prospecting emails too, uh, mini press releases, it, literally anything you can think of. It can give you that structure and it just takes sort of that mental weight off of you and saying, okay, you, you hear that saying, you know, draft quickly, edit slow. This gets that first draft out of the gate and just, you know, really should help simplify everything. But, you know, I, I don't think we can say this enough. It's not the answer. It is the progress to the answer, right? So like continue to iterate, continue to be creative um, you don't want chat GBT just running your whole business because eventually one day it might. And then, you know, yeah, it, yeah. Well, it, my it, side, it, I won't be able to write copy anymore in advertising. Yeah. We'll have, we'll have chat GPT as our, our new VP of marketing at Broadloom. Um, <laughs> no, we would never do that. But I, you know, I think there's, there's also some creative uses that we're seeing pop up, um, that are pretty fun. I included a few in the ebook that I wrote that's, that's, uh, embedded in the blog post. Um, you know, you could ask ChatGPT to write you a haiku of flooring, right? If you wanted to to, to run that on social, um, you know, let's say you were super busy and you knew you needed to like, you know, make dinner, but you didn't want to think of like a recipe to cook from. You can ask ChatGPT, 
to come up with a cool recipe with the ingredients you already have in your house so that as soon as you get home, you have something to work off of. Um, again, like Jeff's saying, it, it, the technology is really, really endless in terms of what you can do with it. Um, and I think we're only scratching the surface of what's possible. And, um, you know, it, things are still early, which is, which is very, very exciting, I think, for anyone that's interested in this type of stuff. Well, the crazy thing, Dan, I swear I'm not just getting hungry, uh, you know, because it's about that time when you're talking about ingredients, you know, the evolution that we're already seeing with this technology from, you know, version to version is crazy with, you know, the latest chat GPT for uh, it can create those images for you. I think someone asked that above, um, you know, can this actually help you generate those images? Um, and there's a lot of other companies doing that as well. You can say, I'm looking for a picture of someone in a red shirt installing LVP or hardwood, and it will give you four different iterations. You can tell them which one you want to build off of, and it can keep working on that. And then back to the food side, you can send them the list of all the ingredients, take a picture of that, and it can A, either guess what you're eating, or B, give you recipes with those items. You know, the other one, I'm looking for a quick five minute, 10 minute recipe, um, you know, with these three to five things. Can you help me? It's just, it's really going to be incredible where things are in probably a year from now and seeing how this has just revolutionized everything that we're doing. Yeah, and, and 100%, could not agree with you more. Um, I think if, if, you know, the folks attending this webinar are interested, I'd maybe love to write another blog post on the, um, the more photo heavy AI ecosystems that exist today. There's a couple that are really interesting one that was created by the company that created ChatGPT. It's called Dolly, um, spelled D-A-L-L dash E. Um, pretty creative name. And then uh, one of the other really popular ones is a company called Midjourney. But it does exactly what Jeff is saying. You tell it, draw me a picture in the style of The Simpsons of a flooring store in New York City. And it'll go ahead and just do that for you. So... Again, we're just scratching the surface of how to use this technology and the implications it will have on businesses of all shapes and sizes. But the cool thing is, you know, it's still very early, right? So, um, so you know, it's like getting into search engine optimization or search engine marketing when Google first launched. You can, you can just think of the possibilities that are out there waiting to be uncovered. Um, but it's really important to familiarize yourself with how these technologies work today so that you're prepared to use them to their full capacity in the future. Yeah, it's it's going to be a wild ride for sure. And look, you know, here at Broadloom, you know, we are about giving the people what they want. And of course, you know, Todd is in the chat firing stuff away uh, to just prove a point of what Chat GPT uh, Chat GPT can do. And you know, I've heard from Tina. Tina wants to hear it. So Todd literally just—we swear this is not set up. <laughs> Todd just sent me a poem about flooring that Chat GPT just wrote. So apologies, I haven't read this before, so my you know poetic timing might be off. Uh, but this is what it just put together in a matter of seconds. In the flooring industry, so much to consider. From style and texture to color and pattern, but one thing was missing, a tool to assist. Until chat GPT arrived to the retailers and list. With chat AI powered technology at hand, flooring retailers can now take a stand. Assisting customers in real time, their shopping experience is now sublime. ChatGPT can answer all queries from product specs to pricing theories. Retailers can now guide them right and help them to choose the perfect site. With ChatGPT as their trusted guide, flooring retailers can always abide by the needs of their customers' demands, helping them make the right commands. So here's to the flooring industry with ChatGPT as their new ally. Together, they'll make shopping a breeze with customers all at ease and satisfied. There you go. You know, may, I don't have a career in, you know, uh, poetic reading, but chat GPT definitely does. I was going to um, say that was way better than anything you probably could have come up with. So we, we should... without a doubt, <laughs> without a doubt, I, I claim to do a lot of things, but, you know, uh, writing poems is not one of them. So it looks like the uh, questions are starting to slow down. Um, uh, just a couple of people thanking you, Dan. Um, 
Any other questions? Again, our, we will always stay here as long as you know, there are questions popping up and people um, you know, ha have things that we can help them answer. So it looks like we're cool in there. Tyler loves the fact that this helps you get away from that blank white page. Trust me. So do we. Um, apologies for being new on that, but ChatGPT can also receive pictures on our only written conversation. Uh, Oliver, that is uh, in the new software. So that's for, I actually haven't even seen it yet. Um, but, uh, you know, that is the next iteration, being able to tie uh, the visual aspect, as Dan was mentioning. And, you know, there's uh, that other company, Dolly, that's been doing this for, I think, at least a year now, Dan. Time's flying. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, Dolly is image creation, right? So, you tell it, you give it a prompt, and it will create you an image from that prompt. Um, and the new version of ChatGPT uh, enables you to upload images to the chat. So let's say we were in that chat box that we were in earlier in today's demonstration, and I uploaded a photo of a flooring showroom, and I can then ask it questions about that photo. So it's smart enough to look at a photo and give you intelligent responses uh, to questions asked about the photo. So you can say how many flooring samples are in this picture, right? What color flooring samples are in this picture? And again, that on the surface is like kind of a neat party trick, but what you're able to do with technology that sophisticated is what really gets someone like me excited, right? Like it's, there's a whole host of things that you can, that you can start to think about doing, you know, in other forms of technology that would make that a really valuable piece of tech. All right. And I am looking, oh, more comment, uh, commentary, Bush flooring, just wrote an ad in five minutes. And like, to me, that is the magic, right? Get in the tool, mess around with it. Cause I can tell you my first prompt stunk as you use it more and more, you're going to feel more and more comfortable with the tool. And again, this is just one of those things, get in early, familiarize yourself with it because this will continue to expand and you don't want it to be that next big tool of technology that, you know, just feels daunting. Um, is there a way to correct wrong information searching my business, gave me the wrong phone number? I think that has to do with when it's pulling the information, right, Dan? Yeah, I think that's, um, again, ChatGPT, the data set that it's using to come up with its responses, you can think about it as it stopped in 2021, right? So anything that's happened after that, the name of your business changed, you moved locations, your phone number's been updated, um, it's probably going to still have the the you know, incorrect information and there's not really a way to provide it with the new information. Now, having said all that, again, this is a good example of the technology being early and, you know, over time it might be possible for you to do those types of things. But for now, um, unfortunately you're, you're sort of stuck with, um, with that, but again, it's something that can be edited, right. And that's what we've been encouraging you guys to do as you're getting these responses from the AI. And I don't know the time frames here, Dan, but I would assume, and I want to get overly technical here, that um, if you use Google's Bard, which is their version of you know Chat GPT, um, it probably crawls or refreshes that information set maybe more frequently than. Uh, yeah, I, I don't it's know. Though, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the answer to that question on on Google side of things. I know there some of the reasons Chat GPT has structured their language model and the way that they have where they stopped in 2001 um, has a lot to do with just like security, right? And yeah. making sure that, you know, the technology they are creating um, doesn't snowball and, and get out of their control. Um, in all seriousness, that's that's a big reason why they've, they've done it that way. So, um, so uh, again, that might change for the more the technology improves, the more we learn the power of the technology and the control that we have over it. That might be something that they changed down the line, but those are the reasons I've read why they've made that decision. Um, All right. Well, that makes sense. Dan, we are almost up on an hour. You must be exhausted. It looks like the questions have slowed down a little bit. Uh, but if you do have questions, uh, please shoot us an email or Dan one directly, dan.pratt at problem.com or respond to any of the marketing emails. We'll see that and we'll get a response for you. But most importantly, Make sure you join us next week, same time, same place for our second annual Broadloom Town Hall. 
Uh, we have a ton of massive announcements to make. Uh, one huge one for all Broadloom customers uh, that you will get for free. And I will give you a little hint here if you want to go back through the chat. Todd has teased a couple of big things that are going to be announced. So uh, if you want to go down that scavenger hunt uh, and start to figure out some of the things, but we have some major product announcements that the teams have been working on. Uh, one for over five years. So we're really excited to finally let that one see the light of day. And then some new tools and services that are radically going to help you grow your business. But with that, thank you, Dan. Killer job. Not a topic that's easy. It's all changing day by day. You know, chat GPT-4 came out today. So can't even record this ahead of time and, you know, hope that it's going to work out later. Uh, have to be current, have to be studying it, and have to make it accessible. So, Dan, I think you did an awesome job. Let's get up for Dan. Killer, killer, killer. And again, we will see all you next week, one o'clock town hall here with Mr. Todd Saunders. But that is us for, uh, you know, the Brawloom squad, Dan Pratt, Jeffrey Bieber. Have a wonderful day, y'all. Thanks, everybody.